People are always asking me, Kelly, how do you stay so calm and relaxed and still get so much done? I'm just kidding. I'm not calm or relaxed right now. I was actually just making the bed and I guess I fell asleep for a second. I have a toddler, so I haven't slept for more than four hours in at least a year. So I kid you guys, I get at least four and a half hours. Okay, you guys, seriously, all kidding aside, yes, I sleep more than four and a half hours a day. And yes, I do have some little habits that I have adopted that have made my days, my mornings, way more productive, which in turn have led to way more productive days. Now don't get me wrong, some days I'm not productive at all. I roll out of bed, put on the same leggings that I wore yesterday that are probably dirty, and the only thing that I really complete all day is making sure my toddler doesn't inflict self-harm on himself. You found an electrical cord to play with that. What a good choice. Oh, this is such a safe choice you made. Oh, oh, no, 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 don't eat that, don't eat that. Let's stand on the floor, okay. Yay. Now, I have found that in order to have a productive morning, you need to be very intentional about it. This doesn't just happen. Aw, really? So today what I'm going to share with you is those habits that I have adopted that have led to a more productive morning, has led to a more productive day, and honestly has made me way more productive in my life. These, these habits have honestly changed my life, not to sound like dramatic about it, but they have. And obviously everyone's life is a little bit different, so my exact habits might not be the exact habits you need, but my goal and hope for this video is that you gain some little nuggets of wisdom to hopefully inspire you to have a more productive morning. Since my productive morning habits are all about intention, it would make sense that the foundation for these habits actually start the night before. So let's go back in time to last night. Well, hello there last night, Callie. Hey, sup future self. Hey, am I a millionaire yet? Well, I mean, no, it's only, it's only 12 hours in the future, so. Right. I mean, I was just checking. Right. Well, anyways, like I was saying, I do a few things the night before that set me up for a more successful and productive morning. Okay, yes, so I will take it from here. There are three things that I do every single night that prepare myself for the next morning. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing I want to do more than at the end of the day is just crawl into bed and go to sleep. But I have learned that by taking a tiny bit of time to prepare myself for the next morning, it is the difference between a chaotic mess in the morning and a relaxing, calm, productive, intentional morning. And a little mind shift that I use for myself is I just remind myself that future, like tomorrow morning, Callie, will thank me for these things. Thanks, girl. I got you, boo. Okay, I know it's a little bit silly to think about being nice to your future self, but like I said, it's this little mind shift and it totally works. And in the morning, I make sure to acknowledge that the things I had done the night before are making my morning easier. And it just like reinforces it and it only takes a little bit of time for those two pieces to kind of work together and develop this habit. Okay, so here are my three things I do every night. Number one, I clean up my space. Now, I don't mean that I clean my entire house, that would be madness, but I pick up the two main areas of my my house that I spend my morning in. For me, that's my kitchen and my family room. When I wake up in the morning and I come down to a picked up space, it starts my day like a thousand times better than coming down to dishes in the sink that I have to clean and toys that I have to pick up. It's a waste of my time first thing in the morning and takes away from other productive things that I could be doing. So for me, I pick up the family room immediately after I put my son to bed, and then I clean the kitchen before I go to bed. Usually my husband and I will actually do this together after we've had dinner or watched a show together. And it's almost kind of like a fun chore since we're doing it together. It's kind of a time to like hang out and we might talk about the day or what's coming up tomorrow. Okay, number two, I grab my outfit for the next day. This is such a simple one. You've probably heard it said a million times, but it makes such a difference. It is one less thing to do or think about in the morning and it helps ensure you actually get dressed. I was also watching a video on Shay Whitney's channel who she's like far more fashionable than I am and I will link her down below. But she mentioned that picking your outfit the night before is actually nice because you're more likely to pick something that's like a little more polished and put together as opposed to in the morning when you're just tired and cold and you just grab your favorite leggings and oversized cardigan. All right, my third and final tip is to get your booty into bed at a decent time. Now I know this one is really hard to stick to because like nighttime is your time to unwind especially if you're a mom you put your kid to bed at like 7 30 and then you just like want a little alone time or some time to hang out with your spouse and like watch tv but it is so important to prioritize a good bedtime if you want to wake up in the morning and start your day intentional and productive so i have two tips that help me get myself to bed on time okay the first one is to turn your tv off an hour before bedtime I think the reason this is so important is because we often forget how time consuming like bedtime prep is. So for me, I like to go to bed between 9.30 and 10. So the ideal time for me to turn off the TV is around 8.30, which sometimes feels really early and occasionally my husband fights me on it. But when I do that, 
I always have time to do my nighttime routine and we're climbing into bed at like 9 15 9 30 and then the next one is to have an actual bedtime set the reason that a lot of us have a hard time getting into bed is because unlike in the morning when we have an alarm waking us up we don't have an alarm telling us to go to bed at night if it helps you can even set an alarm on your phone to make this happen set it for one hour before you want to go to bed TVs off and start your wind down night routine. Okay, so we have tackled my three habits that I do every single night that then lead to a more productive morning. So let's move on to like actual habits for the morning. And the first one is gonna feel like a broken record and kind of no brainer because I'm sure you've heard it before, but that is to wake up earlier. So this means if you go into an office, maybe waking up 15 or 20 minutes before you would usually wake up. If you're a mom, wake up a half an hour before your kids get up. It allows you to start your morning right instead of starting it chaotically. Good morning, you guys. It is currently 4.42 a.m. And I got up maybe 20 minutes ago. I figured I would just kind of show you how this works in like real life. Now obviously when I'm telling you wake up early, I'm not saying you need to wake up at 4.30 every morning, but the way that this kind of evolved for me is I used to get up at 6.45 for my office job, um, and then when I decided I wanted to start waking up earlier, I set like a 6 a.m. wake up time, and that was for my wake up time for a long time. I had extra time in the morning sort of for myself. Um, now I have a son. His wake up time is usually 5.30 to 6, so if I want time to myself, and I wanna tell you, this is not every morning. I'm not waking up at 4.30 every single morning. Usually for me, it's somewhere between three to five days a week. Weekends, I let myself sleep in until my son gets up. It's fine to like totally sleep in and just like veg out once in a while, but in general, don't sleep in too late on the weekends because it'll mess up your internal clock. So if you wanna get up at 6 a.m. every single morning, sleeping in until like 10 on Saturday, Sunday, is just gonna totally throw that off. So try to do like sleep in until eight on the weekend and it'll make your 6 a.m. easier on the weekdays. Anyways, I got up early to get work done, so I'm gonna go do that. And if you're currently not a morning person, you're like, there's no way that I could wake up any earlier than I already do, I have an entire video on how to become a morning person, and I will link that down below. Next morning habit, the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning and I'm making my coffee is I drink 10 to 12 ounces of water. Our bodies become extremely dehydrated overnight and it's part of the reasons that you actually feel really sluggish when you first wake up. Our brains are something like 70% water and so making sure to rehydrate is basically fuel for your brain. I actually started this routine when I was pregnant because I'd heard somebody say the saying, they say, have a glass of morning, glass of morning. Have a glass of water every morning for yourself and have a glass of water for your baby. And that just kind of stuck and I've just kind of stuck with it since like not being pregnant anymore and I make sure I have a nice glass of water for myself every single morning. My next habit is to become a list maker. Now I know everyone tackles their tasks differently but this is what works for me so I want to share it. I start every morning with a list of tasks I want to accomplish so I know exactly what I want to get done that day. Some tasks might be really big like finishing editing a whole video. Others might be really small like make sure to switch the laundry. It's basically anything I wanna do that day that's not part of my normal everyday routine. And then I add to it throughout the day if I think of something that comes up and I cross things off as I finish them, which is super satisfying. The reason that these little running to-do lists work for me is because they keep my productivity level up and running all day long. Let me give you a little example of what I mean. Do you ever sit down to have free time and then you start to wonder like if you actually have free time, if you're just forgetting something you're supposed to do? Or maybe you have like 15 minutes of idle time while dinner's cooking or your child's taking a nap and you know that you have things you wanna do but you just can't think of them on the cusp. Lists solve that problem. Whenever I have idle time, I go straight to my list and I know exactly what it is that I wanna accomplish and I can start crossing things off my to-do list. Lists also act sort of a little bit like accountability for me because I get a lot of satisfaction crossing things off off my to-do list and I stay accountable for what the things were that I wanted to get done that day. And I know that like lists seem like such a trivial thing, but they honestly make a huge difference for me and it works really, really well to make sure I accomplish the things I wanna accomplish in the day. Sort of unrelated, but I wanna tell you guys about the planner that I'm using right now because I found this on Amazon for $15 and for me, it's honestly the perfect planner. It's called the Minimalist Day Planner. I shared this with you guys on Instagram, but I love it because it just has what you need. It has a monthly view and then it has a weekly and daily day views. Each day view has a spot where you can put your to-do list and then it has a timetable too so you know any appointments or schedules that you have to do and it doesn't have any of the fluff that I don't want out of a planner. It's 2020. I don't need a place to write down like my contacts and my friend's birthdays and my planner. I love that it takes out all the fluff. It's just the stuff you need. So I will link this planner down below because I'm totally obsessed with it. My next habit is to get ready. Now, don't get me wrong, occasional pajama days are the best, but in general taking five to ten minutes to get dressed, even 
even if it's just switching from your nighttime leggings to your daytime leggings, brushing your hair and throwing on some concealer, it makes all the difference for me. And it's even more important for me now that I'm staying home with my son. So for me, getting ready is just sort of this mind shift. It tells my brain, okay, it's daytime, it's time to work, it's time to be productive. I also just feel like when I get ready, I'm just more prepared to tackle whatever the day might throw at me. If I realize like, oh, I gotta run out and get some milk, I'm like ready to go, I can grab my keys and head out the door. All right, guys, there you have it. Those are my seven habits that I have adopted that have led to a more productive morning and a more productive life, and honestly, a happier life, because I find that I'm not running around like chaotically every single day. I kind of know what I need to do. I set my days up right. And it's just made me not just a more productive and organized person, but an overall happier person. And I want to be honest with you guys, it took me quite a few years to like fully adopt all of these habits. So don't feel like you're just going to like jump right in and start doing them all if you're not really doing any of them right now. Or if you start one and you kind of fail at it, that's okay. Sometimes we have to hit the reset. These are habits and just like all habits, you can sort of break them or lose them or fall off the wagon and you need to get back on. Like for me during the holidays, I lost a couple of these habits and so January 1st is kind of a chance to like hit reset and start doing them again. It's never too late to adopt habits, to start new habits, to form new habits, to change old habits. You get the point. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I really hope this video was helpful. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video.